When I turned pro, I didn't think I was good enough to just get on tour right away. But then, you know, now not having status, you're like, oh, have I gotten, have I gotten worse? You know, what's kind of gone on? But golf is hard. And if you're putting that sort of pressure on yourself, you're just going to keep beating yourself up and it's get worse and worse. I'm driving. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, staring in the face the first time in 28 years, not not having a European Tour ranking, which is a strange feeling, um, I have to say, uh, and uh, it doesn't sit overly easy with me. However, you know, everything has to come to an end at some point. I'm telling you now, if your life depended on playing golf, you wouldn't enjoy it as much. From 50 onwards, I'd like to have like more of a normal life. I don't know how certain people see it. I feel like they would, they love the idea of it, but I don't think anyone would ever really understand what we put ourselves through. Obviously, it's very easy to look up what we can win and what we earn, but they never see what goes out. And that's the bit that no one ever talks about. Q School is the way you make your way to the tour. It's not like a normal tournament. If you make a mistake in one of those stages, that's it for another year. You know, you're back down either on the challenge tour or, or below that if you haven't even got a challenge tour card, trying to find a way to see if you can make it onto the tour. And um, it's a different beast altogether, but it is how you find your way onto the place that you always dreamt of playing as a youngster, and that's on the DP World Tour. The DP World Tour is the ultimate reward for making it through the final stage of qualifying school, but the opportunity to chase glory on the global stage and play with the best in the world is something awarded only to those who can handle the pressure of making it there. You know, Scotty Shuffler had a great comment uh, a few years ago about pressure, and they are saying, you know, this is so much pressure playing these tournaments. He goes, no, pressure is playing in Q school for your job. For every player in the field, an entire season of hard work and dedication comes down to one last opportunity to earn a life-changing spot on the DP World Tour. Over 1,000 players from across the globe have been part of the rigorous journey to get here. 156 remain, and at the end of six grueling rounds, only the players that finish inside the top 25 will have secured their status for next season. I mean, you have to grind it out. You know, there's the, the ego has to be uh, left in the hotel room there because it's really only grinding. But it's a, it's a one-off chance, you know, it's a whole season that comes down to six rounds. They have all made it on merit, but every player's journey to get here is different. While there are many players hoping to make their way to the DP World Tour for the first time, there are as many trying to make their way back. We've been panicking a little bit with the weather because it was terrible, terrible on Thursday, then very cold on Friday and we were a little bit afraid of getting frost in the morning and then delaying things and all that. But right now here we have 74 players and 22 of them will go on to the final stage. Some of them are coming from the first stage, some others are coming from the challenge tour. Uh, some other from the DP World Tour, so it's a combination of players, but we had 74. Alex Maguire enters the final round of second stage, tied in 12th place, and needs to stay inside the top 22 to secure his spot at the final stage next week. A little bit nervous, but um, it's a round of golf. I've played many of them in my, in my life, and uh, yeah, today I just got a treat that I get to Another walk in the park, um, obviously has a big, bit more significance, but if I can go do my thing, I think I'll be okay. Evan Harmling from Boston successfully navigated the first stage of qualifying school and currently finds himself tied 22nd in line to advance to the final stage. I'm 35 and I want to give myself every, every crack at getting onto a major tour and starting to earn some real money. There's more Americans enter Q School now than any other nationality. It's, it's just 
become that way in the last couple of years, really. It used to be England was the most represented nation, now it's uh, USA. So there's a lot that come over. On the D from the United States of America, Evan Harmelin. I brought the headphones out for that final round because I hadn't done it the first three days and and get a little bit static, a little bit kind of thinking about thinking about the number. And this kid told me one time, he's like, you gotta you gotta listen to the reggaeton and then the birdies will come. And then I did it one day, and then all of a sudden I started making a bunch of birdies. <laughs> Alex is still an amateur golfer, but showed his potential at the top level when he qualified for his first major tournament at this year's Open Championship after he won the Open Amateur Series. I don't like game plans because, like I said, things can change. The biggest shot of the day for me today is the first tee shot, and the next shot is the biggest shot of the day, so I have to keep doing that. And welcome to Fontanals Golf Club, to the final run on the tee from Ireland, Alex Maguire. Play well, thank you. On the same day, the opportunity to gain automatic promotion to the DP World Tour is underway at the Challenge Tour Grand Final. Tom Lewis, a two-time DP World Tour winner, is currently placed outside the top 20, which means his chances of earning playing rights for next season hang in the balance. Tom Lewis was clearly a formidable player. We learned that in 2011 uh, at the Open. Uh, when he led after that first round as an amateur. That's uncharted territory. Well, it's not uncharted territory, but it doesn't happen often. You saw his swaggering confidence and arrogance, but not in a bad way, like a self-belief. You think he's got all the stuff inside. What's his game like? Well, he's got one of the most beautiful swings on tour. And he is arguably one of those guys that I think had the struggle from success. Back at stage two, Alex's start didn't go as planned, as two bogeys on the front nine saw him slip from tied 12th to 19th. A fellow Irishman, John Murphy, earned his card through Q School last year, but is not in contention to repeat that this time. Very disappointing, let my tour card slip. Probably a mistake that I made this year was looking at, looking at others too much. Being out in the driving range and seeing, oh, this is what, you know, say you see the number 10 player in the world, you're like, oh, that's what he's doing, maybe I should do that. Or you see Roy McIlroy in the range, you're like, oh, that's what he's doing, maybe I should do that. As soon as you get your tour card, you're, you're good enough to be there. There's nobody that's playing out on the DP World Tour that, is, that has got there by fluking it. Evan is heading in a positive direction, climbing up the leaderboard. I enjoy the moment. I think that feeling a little bit of that pressure kind of hones my focus. I did feel a little bit off. Like, it wasn't easy for me to focus early on that round. I got two young girls. I mean, I think about them that, I mean, that always, like, makes me smile and that kind of just relaxes me. As pressure mounts, Alex cards a double bogey and drops three further shots on the back nine to end his chances of earning a DP World Tour car for next season. Yeah, just didn't really have it out there. It's unfortunate. The last round of, last round of the year for me is, is a bad one, but um, I've had pressure in amateur events for the last you know, three years, but this is more stress and nerves. Uh, sure, I'll, I'll find, I'll figure out something to do. I'll probably play some well. Knowing that I don't have a job script for next year on on European tour, the pressure that comes with the with the game is fairly astronomical. You know, and this is only second stage of Q school. This is the <laughs> as far as um, levels go in this game. You know, there's going to be more pressure next week at final stage for for those that make it. Evan, however, fired a closing 68 to ensure he will be at the final stage. 
I absolutely nailed this putt. Now I was about to start walking it in. I mean, like everything about it, I was like, this thing is dead center. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, wait, this is starting to creep right. Then I think it hit something and broke a little right and then lips out. And the last day nerves and all that being considered, it ended up being in clean. But yeah, it was, it was nerve wracking, definitely. Every shot counts out here. Having fallen short at the Challenge Tour Grand Final, Tom Lewis will also have to make the journey to the final stage at Q School, his last opportunity to regain his card for the upcoming season. Oh. Honestly, I haven't had anything good happen to me for a long time, so I don't expect much. But so you got to, someone's got to make the numbers up, right? So let's see. If I, if I go there with uh, not expecting much, then I can't get disappointed, right? That mindset, and be brutally honest, what am I doing here? Once you've played all four major championships and contended and won tournaments, that's tough. So mentally, taking it in your stride, taking the hit to the ego and getting back in, it is one of the huge challenges for players that have fallen off the tour and fall into that category. It's the start of six grueling days of golf, where only the top 25 of the 156 players competing will earn their playing rights on the DP World Tour next season. It's a tournament that will challenge every facet of the physical and mental side of the game. I think the thing that stands out the most at Q School compared to any other week on tour is the emotions, because it's not just a job. It, it, it is their living, but it's their passion as well. And whenever you put those ingredients into six rounds of golf, where it's when your card will go home, you're gonna find that. And so I think the emotions are off the scale. Everyone starts the same. You gotta go out there and you gotta earn it. No, no one's gonna give it to you. Doesn't matter what you've done in the past. Doesn't matter who you are. You could have been, you know, this could be your first Q school. This could be your 20th Q school. Everyone starts out the same. It's always a little nervous to get to the qualifier school. It's not never been easy, especially the top 25. I've been playing on tour for quite a while, but I have to say every time I come back to the Q school is always uh, at the top spot. Any person who gets on a tour once doesn't want to leave. It's, it's one of those where you almost feel like you're losing something. You're losing your home, you're losing your playing rights, you're losing you're losing a lot and um, I don't want to leave. I, I want to get that card again and it doesn't matter how, but I'm going to get it. I remember the first time I came across Tiger Woods was at a prize giving, in terms of up close and personal, was at prize giving at what became the WGC Champions. But the first time we played it at Shesham, where it was played all those years, Howler won, Tiger came second and I came third. And I remember sat next to Ty thinking, I can't believe how close I got to you this week. Dropped a couple of shots, got closer to Woods. That could have been nervous times for you. Yeah, well, I didn't want to beat them too badly, so I thought I'd give them a chance, you know. <laughs> I know it's one instance. This is the sort of caliber of player we're talking about. A, a Ryder Cup stalwart. He's done it all. Prolific winner, top 10 player in the world at his peak. I uh, found a ball and a golf club in the cupboard under the stairs when I was about nine years old and I lived on my school playing field. And, uh, and when I wasn't playing football or doing team sports, I was out on the field hitting a ball around. Found my way to Broom Manor Golf Club when I was about 10 years old. And, uh, and here we are 38, 38 years later. The addictive nature of being in, in the hunt, going down the back nine of a tournament at this level, uh, on the DP World Tour, that's a hard thing to let go of, I, I, even for me now this far removed from it, I miss it badly. I just know I can't do it. And I think Dave still believes he's got a bit left. On the tee now, from England, David Howell. For him now wanting to still do it, I think that's the sign of a true 
fighter of a player in terms of just wants one more go around, wants to feel it one more time. In his mind, he believes, I think I've still got it in me to contend and try and win. Just the pure joy of hitting great golf shots, that feeling you get when you're a kid, when you hit one properly for the first time, that's always resonated with me. And I've had many a week, month, year go by where those shots are few and far between but always just hanging on for the next feeling of, oh, that was beautiful. No one in the world could have done better than that. Um, that's stuck with me throughout. Um, the carrot's always there on tour. Next week, you know, the big week, there's a lot of money to be won. There's a lot of, you know, fame and fortunes just around the corner. Um, always trying to be optimistic, even in the dark times. Fifty-six guys, uh, players playing for 25 spots uh, and ties. I mean, they're playing for everything. This is the, the unusual thing about about the uh, qualifying school final stage. Normally, 72 hole. There's a cut after two rounds. Uh, here, the cut is after four. They alternate the two courses uh, for the uh, four rounds, and those will then fight for their cards over this course on uh, rounds five and six. I mean, making it to the DP World Tour is a life-changing um, situation. You, know, you could have a great season. We've had many guys coming from pure school that have won tournaments the year after. Uh, so it's a life changer, even making the cut. Making the cut is big uh, for a lot of these players because they do get uh, a category on the DP World Tour, not as good as the ones who obviously get their cards, but they will get some starts next season. So it's a huge week. John Catlin's that classic hard luck story, really, in terms of three wins coming in quick succession. The exemption runs out, and the year it runs out, we're now to keep his card, he doesn't. Wonderful finish, those three birdies in the last four. A closing 64. He had started the day four behind. He won it in the end by two. Two wins in three weeks. Catlin is the 2020 Dubai duty-free Irish Open winner. Well, the blink of an eye, you've gone from being hero to feeling like a zero because you're back to where it all started and you were on this sort of climb, the ascension in the career, and all of a sudden it's a quick plummet. I gave myself a good chance to shoot a good number today. Probably the best I've played on this course in the last two times I've played it. Felt confident in the strategy, I just didn't execute. Golf's going to throw curveballs at you all the time. And just kind of reset the mind and just keep focusing on the shot at shot at hand. Uh, just keep trying to execute as good as you can. I mean, that's all you can do. Just keep playing. Okay. I was four when I started golf, but my dad was a golf coach, so it just snowballed from there. I, I the more I went to school, the more I hated it, and then I thought, well, I'm going to have to be good at something. If I can't be clever, then I better be good at sports. If someone said to me, okay, if your dad wasn't a pro, would he, would you be a golfer? Maybe not, you know, it'd be something else. And that is 20 year old Tom Lewis, finishing off in dramatic style. When I turned pro in September, 2011, I obviously won in the end of October, and probably by March that next year, like six months later or so, I was like, this is actually hard. I got off to a fast start, probably took it for granted, now I'm panicking, like maybe I'm not good enough. Then that sort of snowballed into where I am now. Sometimes I think this is, this is coming to an end because I've only ever wanted to be great at something. I didn't want to just make the numbers up and right now I'm just making the numbers up and it's killing me. But do I love it? I don't know anything other than it. So I'd say no, I don't love it, but at times when the world's on top of you, you want to just completely walk away from it. And then there's times where you're like, actually, you know, like maybe I do love it because I've got a new idea and maybe this will make me better. I don't know. My dad was a big Jack Nicholas fan. That's why my brother's called Jack. First question I asked Jack, I said to him like, okay, Jack, I need to know what the difference is between the average, like me, and the greats. 
like yourself? And he said, he just pointed at his brain, he said, it's all in here. And I was like, well, I'm, I've got no chance because <laughs> I'm nuts. So I was like, oh, okay, well, we've got somewhere to, you know, to work on. But I understood what he was trying to say. He was like, look, at the end of the day, we all have the same doubts and fears and all of those things. But the difference is the greats just deal with it better, basically. It's a long week, you know, I, I think I explained it the other day, I think it's so easy to overexert energy. And when we're obviously used to a lot of golf, but six rounds is a lot. Like, I've been counting holes down, like I've got a hundred holes left. Sometimes when you want something so bad, I always think it's a bit like the wet bar of soap. It's like, the harder you try and grab the bar of soap, the more it slips from your grasp. Um, and that can be golf sometimes. The harder you try, the more it grazes the edge of the hole with the putts. I don't like going into rounds that like Monday qualifier mentality where it's like you got to shoot six or eight under like that's not how my eight under rounds come. Keep getting more comfortable, keep honing the focus and, and improving each day. Uh, I shoot one under today. It, it's not the best, but it's not not worse. Obviously, six day of golf, you know, everyone gonna make a lot of mistakes. Yeah, frustrating start 76 is obviously no good. Uh, and a lot of work to do. 90, 90 more holes or something? <laughs> Just keep playing. Just keep playing. As the first round concludes, some early contenders have emerged, while others have left themselves with work to do. With five rounds to go, the importance of patience and positivity for each player will be critical. the hills today it is round three so my job really is to tell the stories of Q school and all the guys that are here while also being sensitive to the fact that this is you know a, a difficult week for a lot of them you know we come in knowing quite a few of the guys that have been here before but there'll be guys that we've never even really crossed paths with or telling stories about guys that we've we've never met before that we're gonna see a lot next year you know there's it's it's really a, a creative job, but it's it's fast paced and it's it's an exciting one. This is the Airbnb. Everybody decent? <laughs> I guess here I guess I'll show you my yardage book. It's good. Control the controllables. Process over outcome. And we got don't take things too seriously. I had to make this makeshift hanger, so I put my, my broken wedge from the airlines up there, kind of the outfits lined up. Got my camera, so I got this guy, an old one, and then, yeah. The 26-year-old social media star turned professional in 2019, but has never had full status on any tour. From New York, James was following in the footsteps of both his father and grandfather into the world of medicine, having earned a degree from Yale, before deciding to pursue his dream of playing professional golf. I was pre-med um, at school, so I was a biology major. My dad's a doctor, his dad was a doctor, so kind of a family legacy that I wanted to hopefully continue, but I always joke around my friends that I went to Q school instead of uh, med school, so don't think I could do more schooling after the amount of years I did. When I turned pro, I didn't think I was good enough to just get on tour right away. But then, you know, now not having status, you're like, oh, my God, have I gotten worse? You know, what's kind of gone on? But golf is hard. And if you're putting that sort of pressure on yourself, you're just gonna keep beating yourself up and it's get worse and worse. Yeah, I mean, the plan is just to play as good as I can and see where that leads me. Um, I think if I get results oriented, that I'll lose the ability to stay in the moment, right? If you focus on, hey, I want to be on the PJ Tour, or the DP World Tour, win this tournament or win that tournament, what's going to get you there? And for me, it's executing each shot to the best of my ability. I missed a putt that big yesterday, and I'm just looking at myself like, okay, that was the first time I didn't stick to my process. I just went up there and whacked at it, and I made a bogey, and that was when I was the most upset because that was something I could have easily controlled by going through my routine, going through my process, but I didn't. I got out of it, I got lazy, whatever it might have been, 
And then you're gonna have times like today where I felt like I was playing really, really good golf. I was two under through eight and then get to 18, I hit one in the water and I'm like, oh my gosh, great. End up making a double back to even. And instead of being in the top 15, I'm looking at the cut line, like, oh, I'm not even gonna get to play the next two rounds. Is that Kerry Deck over there? Is he not supposed to be at the other course? I'm gonna go over to recorders and uh, I'm just gonna go and find out if they've changed the draw or if he's supposed to be here. 10.50, perfect. Happy Brown Rat should be playing the lakes today. Yeah, yeah, I can literally see him there. Let's go and see, because if not, then I'll get um, one Somebody of the referees yeah. to... I just don't want him to miss his tea time. Kiradek Api Banrat was scheduled to play his third round at the lakes course today. However, he incorrectly arrived at the hills course. Now he is in a race against time to make it to the other course before his tea time, risking disqualification. I just saw you and I was like, I'm sure he's at the other course today. <laughs> Thank you. You're okay. Thankfully, mine is. Well, then I'm fine. He probably wouldn't be playing any more golf this week. Um, you know, missed, missed tea time is a DQ, so it's just a good thing we decided to go there today. Well, his tea time is 10.50. It's currently 10.42, so... One minute. And the final player of this game from Thailand, Kiradev Afibarrat. Rush come over here and, and make it by the tea times. Um, yeah, it's a little excited from start of the day. I started golf when I was eight years, eight years old, following my dad to the range every, every day after his work. First year I go to the junior golf event. Um, then my dad saying, if, if I start to play this game, I don't really have to do the homework, which is good for a kid. So I play it like seriously from there on. I've been having a lot of stress on the way through the DP tour end of the seasons uh, it's not the way I expect but this game can change fast if I pick up you know one good day good forms and carry all the confidence to next seasons um, who knows I've been I've been do it many times I got four title under my belt I've been up there for so long and I mean I don't feel that like I'm far off from my best it just just need something in myself to, to take, bring it out. At the end of round three, those outside the cup line have one last round to move into the top 70 and keep their hopes alive of earning a DP World Tour card for the upcoming season. David Howell has had a disappointing week and could be facing limited playing opportunities in future. It's such fine margins out here, like just a slight mindset change or a little more confidence in a certain shot and you execute it and all of a sudden the momentum kind of builds on itself. Uh, you know, momentum I think is a big part of this game and if you can start to build it, then it kind of carries you on. So I felt like today I just, I had a lot of good good shots and I made some really, really important, important putts, so. After today's performance, Tom Lewis is currently outside the cut line and needs to move up 18 spots just to make tomorrow's cut. To put himself in contention for a card, he'll need to produce some of the best golf of his career. Yeah, strange day. Not much of a chance of making the cut, let's face facts. I woke up and thought, well, come on, 59, best round of my life to make the cut. Um, anything's possible, isn't it? But uh, let's face facts, not overly likely. So. Um, yes, yeah, staring in the face the first time in 28 years, not not having a European Tour ranking, which is a strange feeling. However, you know, I've had an amazing run and uh, my entire adult life has been spent on this amazing tour, um, playing in some of the world's great tournaments with some of the world's best players. So, um, you know, everything has to come to an end at some point. Hey, good morning, how you doing? Well, today is, is round four, which is a huge day, especially for those guys who were, you know, trying to make the cut, which is uh, top 70 and ties. It's a massive day because making the cut means uh, it's a big difference. Well, here we go. 58 beckons. <laughs>
obviously we're halfway through now. If it doesn't work out, something else is going to happen. If this week is meant to be, you know, putts will drop and I'll play well and I'll shoot a really low score and I'll give myself a chance. But if it doesn't, then, you know, maybe something better will come along over the next few months or year. And whatever happens this week is a reason why that happened. talking about players like like Tom Lewis the right mindset is to see it as you've got nothing to lose more than capable of shooting low scores so it, it's not about making the cut Tom I doubt very much will be thinking about making the cut Tom made a strong start to his fourth round with three birdies in his first nine holes but his place in the final two rounds is still far from guaranteed if it goes badly, it's all over, but you've got to push. Uh, so it's permission to take the handbrake off. And for a player like Tom, uh, you know, that's going to be something that could be really quite handy. If you believe in yourself and you go out there and you free up completely, and play with no consequence, then you can deliver those sorts of performances where 61 is possible. Not every golfer's got 61 in the locker, but going out there and doing it in that uh, cold room when you absolutely have to do it, that's what's most impressive. Yeah, it's a strange feeling, just coming up the last there. Um, it's not the first time I've been at tour school was here last year but was fortunate to, enough to, to play uh, on the tour again and, and the only other time was the thrilling uh, first time ever back in 1996 when I got my card so um, yeah it's a uh, it's a very strange feeling not having uh, not having a European tour card first time pretty much as an adult so uh, uh, I'm okay but I guess it's gonna hit me in the days uh, coming up and um, you know, it's going to be a different world from now on. So yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty emotional. I didn't think much of it, but it did take a toll. Kind of being here for a couple of weeks and being away from the family, kind of a long way, and the time change. But uh, going to go home. We're going to take it one day at a time. Those who haven't made the cut must now depart, while those who remain have two more days to fight it out for a place in the top 25 and a DP World Tour card for next season. Most of the time it's not going right. It's, I want to be the best player that I can be and push myself to limits that I otherwise did not know I could have reached. My family, they keep telling me that I have what it takes, I have what it takes, and I want to make them proud, right? I want to make my girlfriend proud. I want to make all those people who follow me on social media proud. It's the sixth and final day at Q School one of the most high-pressured moments any golfer will face in their career. Players like Freddie Schott, Tom Lewis and John Catlin currently sit within the top 25 and are just one round away from securing their DP World Tour card. Others like Kiradek Apibanga and James Nicholas are facing an uphill battle, needing a low round to keep their hopes alive. This is the biggest day of their lives for some of these guys that are playing this week. It's all about can they get over the line, can they make top 25 and get the car to play on the tour next year. So it's a critical day for them. In total, this is our 62nd day of competition through Q School. 
So it's a very long process, but yes, this is a huge day for many of these players. My mom, this, I think this is the first event of this year that she's traveling with me. I feel like more support around. My friends on the back, my mom here, my agent here. Feel comfortable playing well and, and spend time with, with family is always good. When your players are the major, especially the master, you're one of the best form A games carry on the week. But this week it's everyone on the DP tour come come back down to play on the Q school that mean they doesn't have a good year so it's always difficult mm. to find a A game in, in this week still a lot of pressure same things but but um, here it's more difficult I'm just I'm just trying to play good golf good golf good golf always always takes care of itself if good golf means top 25, great. If good golf means top 10, great. If good golf means a win, that's even better. But I, I definitely put too much pressure on myself this year. I was trying to do too many things, and so I'm just trying to keep it really simple because I feel like simple works. If I had to describe Q School in three words, exhilarating, pressure-packed, intimidating. Having started in 39th this morning, James is playing well and working his way up the leaderboard, edging closer and closer to the top 25 spots. Yeah, I mean, it mean the world to be on like DP World Tour, so um, I'm going to just try to settle in right now and then we'll see what happens because I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, right? It's obviously a big deal if you get your full card and if not, it stinks and you're, you're back here next year. Or hopefully you find another way to get out there, but we'll just kind of wait and see how it goes. Meanwhile, Tom, who began the day in 11th, is also playing well and holding his position in the top 25. I was sort of telling myself that I was excited rather than nervous. So, you know, I was like looking forward to teeing off because it's much easier to, to be in the ropes instead of out of them. So um, in a way, as soon as I teed off, I felt, I felt OK. Freddy, who started the day in third, is in prime position to win his card back for next season. If I would qualify for a major next year, that would be like that would be nice um, to see that happening. But obviously, winning tournaments. If, if, I, if I speak about long-term goals, I want I, I want to be in the elite of the of the game of golf. I want to be in there. I want to be one of the best golf players in the world. And that's that's these are my goals really. Yeah. If you're good enough to get to that final stage, then you're good enough to be able to shoot the scores and you know capable to go ahead and try and win the thing. And it does matter. Like where you finish in those rankings matters in terms of the opportunities that will come your way at the start of the season. And then you need to then play well again to make sure you re-rank in, in a good spot to give you more opportunities as the season goes on. So playing to win is always going to be a good thing in this game. If you do that, I think you'll find most top players play with that mindset. As the players are making their way through the final nine holes of the competition, every great shot or small mistake becomes even more significant. John Catlin entered the final day in 24th place and looked on track to secure his return to the DP World Tour. After late mistakes resulted in bogeys on the 16th and 17th holes, those hopes quickly slip away and he finishes in 46th overall. On the par 5 18th, Sweden's Christopher Broberg has one final chance to make it into the top 25, but he needs to make a birdie. Christopher Broberg is one of the most talented golfers that I've probably played with. Obviously, injury has been a, part, a problem, and you shouldn't underestimate mentally what injuries can do in terms of doubt that it can place in, in the game sometimes. But also, the life on tour isn't always an easy blend. I know, Chris, that's something he's found the challenge of being living out of a suitcase on tour, it, it's a strange life. The one thing I'd say that's great for Chris is that we know his, his best is more than good enough. It's superb, he's won big when he's won. Um, it's the consistency that's challenging. Everybody wants this so badly, so the last few rounds I've been, you know, stressing a lot, you know, about my putting and my short game, but I didn't play great today, to be honest. I had really bad shots out there, but I, you know, a lot of tension in the body.
I had my car for so long and been injured a lot, but I hit the best one on the last, so that was the important. It's nice to just be on the DP World Tour again. Making your way to the final stage is an accomplishment, but I would say it depends on the individual. It, like all these things in the game, you can't fake it, but if you have that belief, it goes a long way towards it becoming a reality. There's always emotion at golf tournaments, and you could argue that winning out here on the DP World Tour is, is a peak emotion. But actually, earning your card and realizing a, a childhood dream is so wholesome that, and that is an, an immensely emotional achievement and a great achievement. You've made it. To shoot seven under final round to earn the DP Tour card again, it's, it's always great. I put myself in the good spot. Uh, I stay patient, be calm, doesn't get much nervous, try to control myself, make sure I hit the ball at the right spot. Um, I think I, I it did today one of the best rounds of the season. No, I mean, this means the world. This is like a lifelong dream. Just, I've grown up watching the PJ Tour and the DP World Tour, so I mean, to call myself a member of that tour. It's the first time I've ever had status, full status on a tour anywhere, so I've always been a conditional guy. So it was uh, pretty remarkable to make it happen today. I couldn't imagine that after last year that um, I wouldn't be back. I wasn't really thinking about winning it, um, but then obviously after like three, four days, I was like, might as well just win it. Um, and uh, so I did. There was there was a mentality throughout the week. It's just amazing to play on the DP World Tour, and that was my only goal to come in this week. And uh, yeah, well executed. Yeah, I'm um, I'm relieved. I I was surprised how calm I was today. Actually, um, last night I probably wasn't as calm. I didn't sleep as well as I would have liked. But you know, if someone said to me, you know, I was going to shoot 10 under in the last two rounds, which my target was 8, I'm uh, I'm really happy with that. It means a lot, you know. Um, I've had some up and down moments in my career. Hopefully, this can start, you know, sort of a new, a new sort of path for me. And hopefully, I can just keep building from here. I've been in these positions before and got excited and, and sort of took my foot off the pedal. And hopefully, I can learn from that this time and um, just keep trying to go forward and um, take the opportunities when I get them. Fine margins of golf are never more apparent than at the final stage of Q School. Triumph, relief and pride go hand in hand with heartache, disappointment and uncertainty. Yet while the road may be unclear for some, for the players that made it, the opportunity to achieve even greater glory lies ahead on the DP World Tour. To watch another DP World Tour video, click here, and to subscribe, click here.